Hello, everyone. Welcome to the lecture series on health management. We discussed that there were three significant landmarks in the evolution of understanding and managing people were the human relations movement, the total quality management movement, and the contingency approach to management. In this session, we will discuss the total quality management concept. To understand the meaning of total quality management, let us first know what does quality mean. Quality refers to a parameter which decides the superiority or inferiority of a product or service. Quality is an attribute which differentiates a product or service from its competitors. It can be measured in terms of durability, reliability, usage, and so on. Remember, one happy and satisfied customer brings many new customers, whereas one disappointed customer will spread bad word of mouth and may spoil many of your existing as well as potential customers. You need to give something extra to your customers to expect loyalty in return. Total Quality Management, or TKM, is defined as a continuous effort by the management as well as employees of a particular organization to ensure unparalleled customer satisfaction through the constant delivery of quality services. Ensuring superior product or service quality is not a single member's responsibility. To properly execute total quality management methods, the entire organization needs to operate as a single unit to pursue excellence. So, it is a joint effort of management, staff members, workforce, and suppliers to meet customer satisfaction. We can say that total quality management is everyone's responsibility in the organization. You can't just blame one person for not adhering to quality measures. Total quality management can be divided into four categories. Plan, do, check, and act. It is also called P-D-C-A cycle. Walter Schuhart originated this concept of P-E-D-C-A cycle and introduced it to Deming. William Edwards Deming is widely acknowledged as the leading management thinker in the field of quality. He was a statistician and business consultant whose methods helped hasten Japan's recovery after the Second World War and beyond. Deming promoted the idea widely in the 1950s, which is known as the Deming Wheel or the Deming Cycle. These four stages in PDC, a cycle are number one, planning. Planning is the most crucial phase of total quality management. In this phase, employees have to come up with their problems and queries that must be addressed. They need to come up with the various challenges they face in their day, today operations, and also analyze the problem's root cause. Employees are required to do necessary research and collect relevant data, which would help them find solutions to all the problems. Number two, doing. In the doing phase, employees develop a solution for the problems defined in the planning phase. Strategies are devised and implemented to overcome the challenges faced by employees. The effectiveness of solutions and strategies is also measured in this stage. Number three, checking. In this stage, people do a comparison analysis of before and after data to confirm the effectiveness of the processes. Number four, acting. In this phase, employees document their results and prepare to address other problems. Deming also proposed a rule called Deming's 85-15 rule. According to this rule, when things go wrong, there is roughly an 85 percentage chance the system is at fault. That means 85 percentage of the failures are process-related failures. 
and only about 15 percentage of the time, the employee is at fault. But unfortunately, the typical manager spends most of his time in wrongly blaming or punishing employees for system failures. There are eight principles of total quality management. Number one, customer first. The customer ultimately determines the level of quality no matter what an organization does to foster quality improvement. Customer surveys and customer inputs are highly valued because it allows a company to better understand the needs and requirements in the manufacturing process. Customer inputs are then fed back into total quality management systems to improve the manufacturing processes. Number two, employee ownership. All employees participate in working toward common goals. Total quality management requires the involvement of every team member to ensure that complete quality control is offered at every level. Total quality management doesn't focus on a single department because the goal is to provide customers with a great experience from every level of the organization. Number three, process, centered. A fundamental part of total quality management is a focus on process thinking. A process is a series of steps that take inputs and transforms them into outputs, which are delivered to customers. Total quality management focuses on the creation and implementation of processes that provide success to organizations. Performance in the process is continuously monitored to detect unexpected variations. Number four, integrated system. Total quality management strategies revolve around leveraging every asset available to the company. This is best achieved through system integrations that combine different departments of an organization into a single, well-oiled machine working in complete synergy. Everyone must understand the vision, mission, and guiding principles as well as the quality policies, objectives, and critical processes of the organization. Number five, strategic and systematic approach. A critical part of the management of quality is strategic planning or strategic management, which includes formulating a strategic plan that integrates quality as a core component. Number six, data-driven, total quality management doesn't employ guesswork. Data on performance measures are necessary to know how well an organization is performing. An organization should continuously collect and analyze data to improve decision-making accuracy and allow predictions based on past history. Number seven, communications. Effective communication plays a large part in maintaining morale and in motivating employees. Communications involve strategies, methods, and timeliness. Total quality management requires every team member to be at their best and to function as a value-adding team member. This means communication and transparency is a core tenets of successful total quality management practices. Number eight, continuous improvement. Total quality management isn't a one-and-done process. Perfection is difficult to achieve, so organizations must always strive to get as close as possible. Thus, the eight principles of total quality management are Number one, customer first. Number two, employee ownership. Number three, process. Centered. Number four, integrated system. Number five, strategic and systematic approach. Number six, data driven. Number seven, communications. And number eight, continuous improvement.